that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. One more time, I want to speak to you. I know you are a believer, you are a Christian, but the purpose for which we are still in this world and we are not that I know some of you, you are praying that you will survive this coronavirus. None of us want to die now. But the question is, why we are alive, what have we been doing for the Lord? Are we obeying the Great Commission? Jesus said we should go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, especially those who have not believed the gospel, those who haven't given their life to Jesus. But we have reduced the things of God to a church, a group of people who are already believers. Remember what Jesus said. He will leave the 99 and go and look for that one soul that is not saved. We have turned everything around in the church. Now, if you look at the parable of the sower, the Lord Jesus said, He is like a seed sower. And the investment he did, 75% went waste. But that didn't stop God from investing still. He created human beings. Majority of the human race have gone astray. But that does not stop God from stopping people having birth. Knowing very well that not all these people who are being born will be born again, will give their life to him. That is God for you. Many of you, you are aware of this great commission. Your pastors are doing it. Other people are doing it. Even people you might be attending the same church with are doing it. But you have refused to do it. You don't want to know. You don't care. No matter how many times you are told, you even see maybe your pastor, your friends on the street. You cannot be bothered. You are comfortable. You are comfortable in the kind of Christian you want to live. You are comfortable only preaching you wouldn't like to do. You would like to do it a different way. You are ashamed of the Lord to stand up boldly to declare your faith in the Lord. Remember what the word of God says, that if you are ashamed of me to testify before the human race, that you are proud of me, that I'm your savior, you cannot declare, I'll be ashamed of you in the kingdom of God, before the angels of God. How would you feel if you, your life is over and you stand before the Lord and said, I am ashamed of you. Get away from me. Go far away from me. How would you feel? Beloved, what else would it take for you and me to go out there and proclaim? Bible didn't say we should keep quiet. Bible didn't say we should live a lifestyle that people will see and give their life to Jesus. Jesus didn't do that. He went, preach means proclaim, say it, speak it loud. Maybe you are hearing me or you have heard me in the past. You have heard me over and over and over. You can't be bothered. You are not proud of Jesus. You are ashamed of Jesus. But when you need prayers, you go to the same Jesus. When you need money, you go to the same Jesus. You are sick, you go to the same Jesus. You have financial problem, you go to the same Jesus. Your daughter, your son is ill, you are getting problem from your working place, you go to all night vigils to call upon Jesus. Beloved, we have been called to scatter the gospel as a seed around the world and leave the rest. You remember what Jesus said, when we put a seed in the ground, or when a farmer put the seed in the ground, they don't know what happened, they don't bother themselves of what happens, they leave the growth for Jesus. They dig the ground, they put the seed over there, and they come home. But they expect that seed to grow, and then they begin to work on the seed. That's why when people become believers we take them through new convert class it's just like the farmer and you expect that at the point it will bear fruit are you a type of tree a type of believer that the lord is expecting fruit from you and is not getting fruit what do you think he will do to you what do you think will happen to you i'm asking you a question are you ashamed of the lord you claim to love and serve 
have you reduced the work of God to only what you do at church? Many of you are not even sponsoring your church. You are not putting in your finances. You are not putting in your tithe. You are not putting in anything to support the church. You only attend church with your presence. You will not participate in anything evangelist, evangelistical. Beloved, let us be careful. As the four lepers warn themselves, we don't, we are not doing anything right. We are not doing something right. We are eating, we are accumulating. Only blind people accumulate wealth in the name of church. Only blind people use the church as a source of living and they have forsaken, they have forgotten about the purpose. This four lepers said, why are we doing this? The purpose for which the prophecy was given, let us go and honor it. The nation is starving and here we are having fun, changing clothes. Sir, madam, young woman, young girl, my Christian brother, my Christian sister, are you doing what the Lord wants us to do? By the time this COVID is over, we all have to change. Now we know what the real church is. The church, Jeremiah said, be careful. Jeremiah warned us. Don't say the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are this. This temple you trust in. You trust in lying words. We still come to temple, but we do everything against the purpose of the temple. He said, this temple, I will remove it from here. And what happened? They taunted him. He was punished. They punished him so much for speaking the truth to them like some of us are speaking. But at the end, he was the true prophet. They were taken away. The temple was destroyed. Today, the church buildings are locked down. We have produced a group of Christians. We have produced Christians who can share their faith. I'm in this country. Now the Jehovah Witnesses people don't can't talk even anymore. They stand in front of train stations holding their tracks. They don't even talk to anybody. If you like, you take it. If you don't like, you don't, you don't take it. They have been restricted from voicing their faith. This is what the world is reducing. Darkness is fighting against light. And you are light? I am light. Why have you, are you hiding your light? I'm asking you. Why are you asking your light? All the Lord said is we should go and spread the gospel. He made an investment that 75% went waste. But he never stopped investing. You and me have to team up together and spread the word of God everywhere we are, every country. Are you too bossy? Are you, you look at yourself, you are ashamed of the Lord. You are interested in your personality. You don't want to disgrace yourself. You don't want to look a fool in the eyes of the world. You can't be bothered to be seen sharing tracks or talking about Jesus. But you go to church every Sunday. You go to prayer meeting. You go to all night. Forget evangelism. Be warned. Be careful. It might cost you dearly. Can you imagine if the Lord tells you at the end of your life, at, your, at the end of your existence, that is a shame of you for keeping quiet, for keeping your mouth quiet, for just attending church and never evangelize to anybody. Can you imagine? Go to bed. Think about this. Think about this. Don't harden your heart. Don't be stubborn. Stubbornness is like witchcraft. Stubbornness is wizardry. Many of us have become so stubborn, we have become like witches and wizards in the church, blatantly disobeying the words of Jesus. Remember what Mary said, whatsoever my son tells you to do, do it. Are you doing your part? May the Lord bless you. Not every prophet will speak what you want to hear. 
not all of us will sweet talk you i will not sweet talk you you may dislike me or like me but i will never stop uh, warning you i will not sweet talk you jeremiah never sweet talk the people he said exile you will go no matter what baruch or any other people say no matter how other people say you will go into exile and it turned up he was right so once more you are a preacher you preach on the social media you are waiting for midnight and come on the social media and pray over there and preach but you can't have the guts to go on the street and pray to dying souls the lord bless you my brother i am in the holy ghost wonderful so beloved please if you are ashamed of jesus this is the time we have to confess use this coronavirus quarantine use this lockdown to re-evaluate your christian life and make a commitment and when this is lifted and this is over come out and represent jesus can you imagine if every christian is speaking to one soul a day one soul a day just one soul a day if all christians who go to church are speaking to one soul a day look at the number of people we will speak to in a day in a year that will give the holy spirit an opportunity to save this life May the Lord bless your obedience. May you not chew me off. May you continue to listen. May I provoke you to righteousness. The word of God says we should provoke each other to righteousness. May you see this as a provoking to righteousness. And don't take me an arrogant preacher, an arrogant young man. May the Lord have mercy on all those who think I'm arrogant. May the Lord have mercy on all those who think I'm too proud. May the Lord have mercy on all those who will see this otherwise. And don't take the inspiration from what I'm saying. The Lord bless you. If you are that obedient servant, well done. Continue to do the work of the Lord. And the Lord will bless you. The word needs us. Heavy needs us. Jesus cannot preach anymore. Angels do not preach anymore. The Holy Ghost doesn't preach. They are waiting for us to do the preaching. And they will finish the job may you start and become obedient servant that will stand before the lord and lord will say well done you faithful servant the lord bless you in jesus name amen hallelujah